Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Owl Gen Tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the new patch. It's called PGL, which stands for Pitch Grain Looper. It's a really cool effect. Before we dive into the actual details inside a patch, we thought uh, it would be a good idea to actually explain what this thing does. It's kind of stutter effect. And then you can control the pitch of that stutter, the, the length of the stutter, and the direction of the stutter, and you can mix it with the dry signal. That's what it does. The way it works is, so it records the incoming audio and then plays back in a small chunks in a repeated manner. And that's going to be in sync with the master clock. And it basically creates the stutter-like effect. And if you shorten the loop length, to the certain point, it started to create, you know, it started sounds like glitches and also even like almost like a drone because your ear stops listening to the, the separation of each loops. So I've already opened the, the actual patch on the hoxtonowl.com. You can find this patch by just clicking on my name under the authors and then you scroll down to the bottom of the page and you will find the patch there. So I've already connected to Owl. So let's just hit load. And that's been loaded. That's so good. Uh, before we start making the sound, let me just quickly explain uh, what each knob does. So the first one, the knob A, it basically controls the pitch of the, the little chunks of loops. So in, if you put it on the 12 o'clock, there's no pitch change. And then as you turn it clockwise, it gets higher in pitch. The length of the chunk becomes shorter, like a classic sampler style. And then if you do it on the counterclockwise, it gets lower and slower. This is basically an intentional design decision. We can make the loop length fixed. So, you know, the loop length separated from the, the pitch, but I just wanted to sort of have that sort of freedom and, and also it sort of doubles as the general loop length control. It also works as the sort of, you can either double up your loop length or halve the loop length depending on the, the position of this knob. So if it's in the middle, in the 12 o'clock, the, the actual loop length you set on the knob C is what you set. So if you turn it completely counterclockwise, it actually doubles that loop length. And then if you do it other way around to completely clockwise, it halves the loop length you set on knob C. And if you do it somewhere in between, it actually sort of makes it out of time. And then I found that really good fun sometimes because, uh, you know, you don't always want to be completely in sync because that basically sort of for me, it reduces the flexibility. So we're moving on. And then the knob B is, it says loop start and direction. What it means is from starting from counterclockwise. So you can imagine your DAW and you record something into it and you can see the waveform. And then imagine the, the, the playhead starting from the beginning of that recording and then finishing at the end in a normal left to right manner. And so you can hear the recording as you recorded. So that's what happens if you turn the knob B starting from counterclockwise all the way up to 12 o'clock. So, so imagine your, your position on the knob B is your playhead. And then once you pass the 12 o'clock, the interesting things start to happen. It actually flips the direction of the playback and what you're going to get is the reverse sound. So again, you're starting from the, the end of the recording and then you basically going backwards as you turn it all the way through to the um, completely clockwise position. So what that's what the knob B does. And then knob C is a loop length and knob C's value is actually depends on the speed of the clock. So in order for this patch to actually function, you need to either do the tap tempo on your LED button in the middle of the module or feed clock signal 
going into the push. I'd like to recommend people to either tap it very slowly or feed the slow clock because so the knob C is basically dividing the length of what you fed into the either the clock signal went into the push input or the the length of your tap tempo. If you feed a very fast clock it actually divides that clock so you started to just hear this like a really short chunk of loops which sometimes is good but sometimes it just sort of goes beyond our ears sort of you know comprehension so so um i mean you know by all means uh, experiment with it but uh, to to just to get the uh, full scale of tonality i recommend you to to start with a slow clock and then moving on to the knob d which is purely mix so if it's on completely anti-clockwise you don't hear anything of the effect you just hear the dry signal and then as you turn the knob all the way up to clockwise position you start to hear the effect and when it gets to the completely clockwise position there will be no more dry signal so you only hear the effect okay so as you can see here's the owl with uh, everything loaded up so let's just uh, quickly hear a little drum loops and it sounds like this. So yeah, there's just a very, very simple combination of kick drum, uh, sort of kind of snare, percussion kind of sound, and then the little hi-hat sound. So as soon as I turn the... Um, as soon as I turn the um, sequence, you can see the the owl's LEDs flashing because I'm basically feeding this very slow clock. For so I'm just basically telling the owl um, what the tempo is of the actual master clock. Um, so let's quickly hear how it sounds um, by just turning the knob D. So there you go. So you start to hear the um, the sort of the repeat of the, the the chunks. So I mean, you know, that didn't sound quite musical. So the fun all starts when you start turning. So let's just turn it up. So yeah. So when you turn the knob C, as you can hear, the um, the repeat loops the 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 chunks of the loops becoming shorter and shorter as you turn it up and then and then the knob b is your um playback head and then as soon as you pass the um, 12 o'clock, everything is actually um, reversed. And then you can basically turn the knob A. And then you can hear, again, the speed and the pitch is changing. So that's basically the um, basic function of the PGL. But as I said, the, the fun starts when you actually start messing with the, all the controls. So let me just show you a couple of examples. The best thing I'd really like to do is to feed a sort of slow envelope into the modulation input D, so which is over here. And then um, hopefully everyone remembers the, the bottom row of these knobs are your CV attenuators. So I'm just going to turn everything down. Um, so I'm just going to restart. Restart the sequence and then 
as I up. The attenuator um, um, you can hear the um, you can hear the effect coming in and out. Then I'm just changing the loop length as well. And then reversing it. Or we can change the pitch. sort of and so forth. So that's one of the things that you can do. So that's one of the things that you can do, but um, that's not just the envelope that you can feed into and you can have fun. Another good thing is to feed some LFOs as well. So let's just uh, restart the sequence. So I'm just gonna patch in the LFO into other modulation inputs and um, show you how things changes accordingly. So. Let me just restart the sequence. And then again, I'll just tap the attenuation knob. So first of all, I'm gonna add that into C, turn it down. And then now you can see the, the loop length is actually modulating over time. Or you can do that to Yeah, you can do that to the loop direction. Um, this way you can mix between the normal looping and then the reverse. That's another good fun. Or we can go crazy and... Yeah, you can do it with the pitch as well. And you can get this much more sort of chaotic kind of glitch repeat thing going on. So yeah, um, so the, the possibility is quite endless. I'm just going to stop that. There's so much more you can do. You can also try modulating the clock feed as well. That creates another good fun, but I just leave that to you guys to play with it. So I really hope you enjoy this beginning of the new tutorial. We haven't quite planned how to do these tutorials yet. And we're really curious to actually hear what you guys want to know. So maybe just leave us a comment on which bit to tackle first. And then please don't forget to hit likes and uh, share and subscribe. We'll be back shortly with a proper in-depth tutorial. So have a good week and uh, happy patching and happy wiggling. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.